The political firebrand Ted Nugent, a darling of the far right, is campaigning at this moment with the Texas gubernatorial candidate Greg Abbott. Uh, this despite uh, Nugent's recent characterization of President Obama as a, quote, subhuman mongrel. Abbott, uh, who is the state attorney general, invited Nugent to appear with him at two events today to motivate the Republican base to vote early. Nugent's uh, president hit a sour note with a lot of people. They say Texans deserve better than a candidate who would align himself with someone like Nugent, who's, uh, who said, uh, who offered a hate-filled assessment of the president. Listen to this. Obviously failed to galvanize and prod, if not shame, enough Americans <laughs> to be ever vigilant not to let a Chicago communist-raised, communist-educated, communist-nurtured, subhuman mongrel like the acorn community organizer gangster Barack Hussein Obama to weasel his way into the top office of authority in the United States of America. Shockingly, Abbott's uh, campaign uh, brushed aside the criticism, saying they value Nugent's commitment to the Second Amendment, issuing a statement. Ted Nugent is a forceful advocate for individual liberty and constitutional rights, especially the Second Amendment rights cherished by Texans. While he may uh, sometimes say things or use language that Greg Abbott would not endorse or agree with, we appreciate the support of everyone who supports protecting our Constitution. Uh, Nugent himself dismissed the controversy, reportedly saying the criticism comes from, quote, people who hate freedom. Do they know the history of that phrase, subhuman mongrel? Uh, that's what the Nazis called Jews uh, leading up and during World yeah. War II to, to justify the genocide of the Jewish community. They called the Jews untermensch or, or subhuman mongrels. If you read some of the literature that the Nazis put out, there's a long history there of that specific phrase that he used involving the President of the United States. You know, I don't know what the Abbott people knew precisely about the implications of some of the things Nugent has said, but Nugent has been very outspoken, has said a whole lot for years that was easy enough to look into, and frankly, when you talk about something like the word mongrel with its racial and ethnic and historic ramifications, there is no doubt, it seems to me, that whether or not Abbott's people recognized it instantly or not, it's offensive, deeply offensive to some voters, and not just Democratic voters, but other voters. Having said that, Wolf, and this is really the dark side of this, might that phrase be a kind of dog whistle and code to exactly some of the voters that Greg Abbott wants? Because I, I, as someone who has studied the Holocaust, studied World War II, I went back and we checked uh, in Der Sturmer, and, and during World War II, uh, Julius Streicher, the Nazi, this is what he would Strike. say about the right. Jews and justifying the genocide of the Jewish people. The Jew is a mongrel. He has hereditary tendencies from Aryans, Asiatics, Negroes, and from the Mongol Mongolians. Evil always preponderates in the case of a mongrel. So that, that's the history of that phrase. And A, I wonder if, if Ted Nugent himself knows that history, the use of that phrase, but B, the Republicans in Texas who are welcoming him on the campaign trail and say, yeah, you know what, he's using some outspoken language, that's Ted Nugent. Do they know what this means to so many people out there? You know, it's fascinating, Wolf, because you look at Ted Cruz, who has long said these outrageous things, calling the president uh, a, a subhuman mongrel, calling Hillary Clinton the B-word, calling women uh, uh, feminist fat pigs, saying a whole host of things. And you have to ask, doesn't he know that these are the kinds of words, these are the kinds of phrases that ought to offend people, but his support of the Second Amendment, at least for some Republican base voters, is so strong it trumps all of that. 